Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today addresses the probability of the imminent death of Coilus Interruptus. He is worried that he stops breathing whilst asleep. He thinks that this may have serious consequences, chief amongst those being funeral expenses. I had a very, very bad weekend of... Tossing and turning. Oh, talk about the Ivy League. <laughs> sleep. Uh, tossing and turning. Did you know that League. sleep? Yes. Napnea. Is it nap, Excuse me? Sleep nap, napnea. Or, no, what are you trying I'm to say? Trying, uh, there's a word there that I can't get. Sleep apnea or sleep napnea. Sleep nappy? Nap, nappy? Napnea. Apnea. Sleep apnea. What are you talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Is it sleep apnea? Apnea. What is it's, that? You see, you don't even know. You see, I've got this wretched, very, very heavy head cold, right? Yes, yes. And you think you're all right during the day, like, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to bed at night, and you're all, and you're all blocked up. And then I stop breathing. You see, with this apnea. I'd be, some some people call that death, right? Yeah. And then you're like a big, you're like a big hippopotamus giving birth. You're big. <laughs> Roar now, ye wonderful image, Sean. Yes. Thank you for that. You see, yeah. and then I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm, 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 and you're tossing and I noticed, turning. I noticed there was something very wrong with you today because when you come in to tidy up in the kitchen today, you sloshed the water all around the floor. I was very uh, no, it's not it like you. No, it wasn't. You it's, made more dirt than you cleared up. So I haven't had a I have a very bad, very very restless weekend. Okay. Very very restless. Well, I'll tired. try and I'll try and make today as gentle as possible. I'm very tired. Oh, you just sit there and don't you annoy yourself. I'm just telling the what, people... Is there a cure for that? Could anyone find... Let me know, please. <laughs> for for sleep apnea? Apnea. Uh. I don't even know what it is. No, I've you never don't. Even, I hope I'd you, never even heard of it. I hope you never get it. It's quite can be quite serious. You're never without a pain or an illness. You can, it's a, it's yeah. a terrible thing. I hope you recover. I would hate to think that this is your last year on earth. Especially when it started so well. Uh, one of hear, the me, things, hear me puffing and patting. I hear you. I'm like an old... It's like an obscene phone call. That's shocking. Go say, I may have to turn off your microphone. Women will be getting excited. <laughs> Although, probably not. Uh, one of the things I'm I... am all th- clammy. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Good. Uh, just move away there, Emma. Uh, keep a wide berth. Let's start the programme for the benefit of the people who are expecting something to listen to. As people from other countries say, there's no stranger than folk. The presenter always tries to keep any contact with the public to a minimum, knowing as he does that you never know what they're thinking or are about to say. Things said that are often unintentionally wounding. I was out at the weekend, as I sometimes do, in the middle of people, and I met people who are familiar with this programme. A number of people, uh, couples, whatever, addressed me and said, Are you Gerry Anderson? And one woman came up to me, I want to hear this. One woman came up to me and says, It's great to see you out. I said, yes, it's great. She says, uh, uh, she says I was in a taxi. She says, um, she says, I'm from Belfast. She says, we're up here. A lot of people uh, visit uh, Stroke City at the weekend. And nearly everyone I talked to wasn't from the city. So people are starting to come up and visit this because they hear all about us, walk over the Peace Bridge and look at the things that we have. And incidentally, our Ebrington Square, our uh, uh, big uh, army base, which is open to the public uh, tomorrow, uh, that's a big thing here. And uh, Brona Gal, her uh, actress, will be in here after 11 o'clock. She's appearing at that, and she's going to tell us all about that. We'll be talking about that. Anyway, a lot of people are coming up to Derry Stoke, London Derry, to have a look around, walk the Peace Bridge, look at the alcoholics. You know the, th- <laughs> you know the, th- the things Stop that we... Stop it. <laughs> the things that we do. And she said to me, she said, I was in a taxi. I said, yes. And she said, uh, and he had the radio on. And I, I said, could you not get you 105? And he says, no, we don't gather up here. Did you not get you and a five up here? I said, no, you can't. He said, but what are you doing up here? He said. <laughs> no, she said to me. And she said, uh, you're on uh, some... Uh, she what? said, no, you're not listening. She said to the taxi driver, can you not get you and a five up this here? Is in, in, this is in Derry? Yes. She right. said, can you not get you and a five up here? And she yes. said, no, we can't gather up here. Yeah. And she said, why not? And she said, so what, what do you think of that? To me. And I said, oh, well, that's oh. the way it is. And she said, and you're on a Sunday night now? You? She thought I was George Jones. There is a calumny doing the rounds that the presenter is shrinking in stature. It is discussed here in a roundabout way. I want you to guess the word that she said, right? She said... You're going to do a little guessing game. No, I'm I've... going to ask you to do it. I'm going to ask you to guess the word that she said. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the sentence and you have to guess the word. Can Emma join in? Any, any, I need help today. I'm weak today. I'm vulnerable. Do it yourself. Yeah, do it yourself. Yeah. And she said to me, she said, God, God, I've finally met you at last. She said, I listen to you on the radio all the time. Uh-huh. I said, thank you very much. That's what I always say. Thank you very much indeed. She says, I can't believe you're so... 
What's the word? You'll never guess. Tan? No. That, that's Gamma. No, I'm not going down that road, Emma. I can't believe you're, you're so... so you'll, never think, you'll never guess the word. So tall? No. So... It starts with T. So t- so t- t- so tiny? Yes. Tiny? <laughs> I don't believe you. He said, you're so tiny. <gasps> I've never been called tiny before. And I said, Well, I think? said that to you before. I, uh, isn't that right, Emma? Yeah. I've, I've said that to the girls. I'm you, not tiny. Yes, you, you're getting smaller. I'm not getting you smaller. Are, you are. What am I, this yeah. incredible shrinking man here? Emma says you're now smaller than her. That's because she's pregnant. Well, she's like a side of a house. No, but you are. You are. I'm getting, not getting you smaller. Are. But I'm not tiny. No, but you're getting small. <laughs> the girls are worried. Emma and Janet are worried about you. It's only the radio's got small. No. I have been training. You're I, a wee I, man now. I, no, I'm not a wee you man. You are a wee man. I've lost a little weight. Oh, I'm you now, have. I, I have. I'm down now to 11 stone exactly. But I, you're at your height. What do you think? I'm shrinking? Yes. I'm not shrinking. You are. I'm wearing low shoes. You're anyway, a wee man. I'm not a wee man. But I'm not tiny. What am I? Yeah, you are. J- Jimmy Clitheroe? Oh, no, you're... You, you know? You know, there was, oh, a, stop it. there was a time you were five foot ten. I still am. You're not. You're anything but. What do you think I am? See, I say you're about five foot five now. You mean I've lost five inches? Yeah. Say nothing, Emma. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> there's uh, a wee call for you. Yes, sir. Better yes. take it then to get out of this. Good morning. Emma, will you fix that thing, please? Emma, will you fix What? It? Emma, will you, Emma, will you fix the thing? It's there. Emma, will you What fix side are you on? I don't need to talk to you because I know what you've done. You don't know how to do it. Eh? Emma. Emma, Emma hello, fix. Ronnie. Say hello, hello Ronnie. Yeah. Hello, hey, Ronnie. Say, how are you? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't there a minute ago. We didn't do a thing. Yeah. Sorry, Ronnie. Sorry. Not to worry. Is that BBC? It, you can tell, can't you? Now follows the tale of a four-piece suit. You can tell that the presenter has lived well. Many of us are lucky if at one stage of our lives we manage to own a three-piece suit. Few amongst us can imagine the unanswerable wealth of a four-piece suit custom-made. Of course, I used to be big. Jerry, whatever happened to all the old boys who used to wear faded suits and colour-coordinated flat caps? That's the fellas who used to be in pubs in the Republic of Ireland. They've all gone away now. This, because they can't smoke and they, the guards are breathalyzing them and their tractor's going at 20 miles an hour. The suits and caps were Sunday best. They were well past their best. When I was a kid... The men of a certain vintage were universally attired in such faded clothing. I used to marvel at the farm labourers who used to turn up for work in three-piece suits. I wonder why this fashion had disappeared. I think a statue should be erected in the memory of these old fellas. That's Ian Duncan and Oma. That's a very good uh, point, you know. Uh, men used to always wear suits, no matter what. That's because... Um, do you realise that... Uh, in I could never wear a waistcoat. Do you know that? You, you could wear a waistcoat, but I couldn't. Because I'm the wrong shape. I know you're the wrong you're shape. You're the right shape. You Although... Recently, you're the you're the wrong. You have you have been the wrong shape. I'm still the right no, shape. No, no, no. You have a wee bit of a sticky eddy. I'm still the right shape. There was a time I had a little belly, but that's gone now. Yeah. Look, look. Where is it? Can you see it? Look, I'm sitting normally. Where's my belly? I always. I can see yours from here. Yeah, looking. no. I, you're, I, I, you're, I, no, you're, you're like you're like a hippopotamus having a baby. <laughs> no, but that's true, you know. Do you know one of the signs that sobered me? And I have to say, no. One of the reasons why men used to always wear suits was because. Before the 60s, there was no such thing as casual wear. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Because uh, you could nobody had jeans or anything. or uh, Nobody knew, you know, slacks. Nobody had those. You always just wore a suit. And uh, do you remember the retreat? They were always shiny. The trousers were always shiny. Young Catholic men like us, we were always forced to go to church, chapel. And remember at 6 o'clock in the morning, and these men would talk about these sermons about how sinful we were. Do you remember the Christmas tree? Remember the Christmas tree sermon? Uh, they used to, you fellow used to stand up and say, they're all from the south of Ireland. He said, look at you down there, young men of Derry. Little do you know, approaching manhood, the pitfalls that are in store. And I have to say to you now, that if you commit sin, you'll be thrust into the bowels of hell. And many of you have no conception of what hell is. Let me tell you what hell is. The heat of a thousand million Christmas trees. I used to think that was great because you know the way a person is telling you how hot hell is. You say, "Oh, it's a hundred thousand trees," but that doesn't mean anything, do you? But you see, they knew to say Christmas trees because you associate Christmas trees with nice things, What's, and you don't realise that. Why is Christ- a Christmas tree hot? No, no, it's not hotter. Well, what but do you mean? see, it'll 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 strike 
terror into your heart if no. they say Christmas trees. Imagine you being burnt in a Christmas tree. It's not nothing to be burned. What? What? You, you don't, don't get this at all. I don't get what you're saying. All right, then. Hotter me... than a thousand Christmas trees or a million Christmas trees, wherever it is. Burning. He didn't say burning. <sighs> what is wrong with you? Don't you understand the English language? He said, hotter than the heat generated by a thousand Christmas trees being burnt. No, you didn't say being burnt. I'm saying no, it now, yeah, right? No, but you didn't say no, it before. No, but you see, if you said a thousand... I saw Christmas trees If you said a thousand trees and being burnt... I saw them. You see, you didn't describe that well at all. Do you renounce the devil? I do. The social anthropologist in the presenter often pops out, especially when Coilus Interruptus is grappling with some mundane aspect of life that bothers nobody else but him. The presenter gently explains the building blocks of life after the DNA has finished spiralling. First of all, you're born, and then you're nurtured by your mum, and then you learn to stand on your own two feet, and then you go to school. And that's the childhood part. And you learn stuff, and, you know, you put a little foot out in front of you and make I mistakes. I, I, I can't take then the, the second word... Stage, I can't take the word mum, by the way. OK, I'm sorry, I won't use mother. it again. Your ma. No, your mother. Your ma. Your mother. So you do that, and then you leave school. That's the first stage of childhood, you know, and then you leave school, and maybe you go to university, maybe you don't, maybe you get a job, maybe you go to England to make fire guards, you know, whatever you uh-huh. do. Uh-huh. You do. Yeah. And then you get married. You see, and that's the second stage. Then you reproduce. Yeah. And you have children, which you have, gladly, healthy, good children. Yes. And then you grow up. And then as they grow older, they get married. And that's the third stage you go through. Mm-hmm. And the third stage is maybe perhaps you're a grandfather. Mm-hmm. And then you've reached the fourth stage after that. Hating everything and approaching death. You must realise you're in that stage. You hate everything and you're approaching death. And, you know, just be aware of it and try and lighten up. Look at me. You know, as a matter of fact, I mean, you know this. I'm older than you. Yeah. But, but what? Many years younger. What What do actors and actresses feel about people sitting in the cinema with tubs of popcorn and Snickers and Coca-Cola or whatever they I buy? I don't think they care because they've already been paid. They're not yeah, in the cinema. Yeah, but they're sitting up there and they're acting their wee heads off. On the screen? On the screen. They're not actually there, Sean. Thank you for listening. Bacamara.